Hello, this is the next video in my playlist. I'm calling General Linear Models 1. And here we're going to introduce simple linear regression. Now the SLR model, simple linear regression, is this. It's y equals beta naught plus beta 1x plus epsilon. Um, y is a random component. It's called a dependent variable, sometimes a response variable. In, initially, we're going to assume x is fixed. So it, and it's called the independent variable, it's a regressor, it's a predictor, um, and the beta 0 and beta 1 are fixed parameters, um, unknown, so we don't know the relationship between x and y exactly because we don't know the population parameters, beta 0 and beta 1, and epsilon is a random term, an error term. So the so you can think about this as x and y following you know generally a linear relationship but there's some error around the line and that's what this epsilon represents so our data comes in pairs x x and y's and so this is a sample of size n right there's n tuples and for each pair we assume that it's this relationship, y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 xi plus epsilon i. So that says it generally follows a line with some error around it. Now the standard assumptions, which we're going to abbreviate SA in later videos, um, is this. We assume that this error term has a mean of 0, so on average the data follows follows a line. The uh, error or the variance of epsilon is is sigma squared, so that's a constant around the line. The covariance between the epsilons is zero. So this is these are the standard assumptions, and so this would be SA one, SA two, SA three. Now, pictorially, what what these represent is this. So this is a uh, so our data the x's sort of look linear and if we put a line down it these uh, the air terms you know on average are zero so this a little positive this a little negative and vice versa on average they equal this line this uh, sta uh, SA2 says it's a constant variance about this line notice they're about the same distance and we're going to assume that all these little data points, you know, the errors, the error here is in, has a covariance of zero with this error. Now, this violates the assumptions, SA2 specifically, because it's not a constant variance. Notice the error around the line is, is sort of small here, and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's heteroscedastic, and that violates uh, SA2. So this the data looks like this we can't do simple linear regression now later in this playlist we will uh, tell how to deal with situations like that but not currently the properties from SA you know the standard assumptions are this so if we look at the expected value of Y our data now it's often written like this because we're assuming that the X values are fixed and so you you see it both both ways are common this is technically I would say more correct but it's often written just like this too so the expected value of Y and remember we're assuming Y follows a line with some error now these are constant 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 this is not so the expectation goes to this because these are constant the expected value of that is zero so on average our data follows this line now the variance of y is is the variance that we plug in what y equals now these are constant terms so they don't factor into the variance so it's just the variance of epsilon which we said was sigma now the covariance between any two data points so if we plug in the equation for yi and then the equation for yj, see that um, 
these constant terms don't factor into the covariance so it's just the covariance of these epsilon i and epsilon j and by standard assumption three that's zero now the interpretation of the beta parameters are this so beta zero in the line represents the average y when x is zero and so if we look at the regression line you know this point right here is is beta zero right it's the y-intercept so when x equals zero then um, that then we that's the term beta not now, beta 1 represents an increase in our average y for a unit increase in x, right? So if we increase x by one unit, then the average y increases beta 1 units. Now, the, the tricky part, though, this only, these interpretations of our beta parameters only fall within the scope of the model. And what's the scope of the model? It's this. So if we collect data, x's and y's, and all our x's fall within this range, then the interpretation of these beta parameters is only valid in here. Okay? Right? Because our data generally follows this slope, but out here it may go down, or here it, you know, it may go to zero. So the, the slope parameter beta 1 is only valid within the scope and even here um, the y-intercept may be meaningless because it's not in the scope of our model really this line it may follow a trend but then just past our scope of the model it really maybe it goes really and it goes to zero so really you know it has no meaning so you have to be careful that when you interpret these beta parameters it's within the scope of the model. Now, sometimes they add in more assumptions than the three standard assumptions. And one of the big assumptions, which we call normal theory assumption, and we're going to abbreviate it NA, is that we, we have the first three standard assumptions, and then we add on to it that the norm or that the error term is iid normal zero and sigma squared right so the sa1 the mean is zero so that's this term sa2 says that the variance is is sigma squared so that's this three says the covariances are zero so that's the independent part of the iid normal zero one and then now we're adding a distribution to the error terms so this is uh, the normal theory assumptions, and we'll we'll address both as we proceed down, the, you know, in this playlist of videos. So we're going to introduce what's called a center SLR model. So the standard linear regression model is this, which we said. Now we're going to add zero to this. We're going to um, add and subtract the same quantity. So these two models are the same but over here we factor out a beta 1 to make it look like this and then over here since these are all constants we just think of this as a new intercept so beta naught star and so the centered model can be thought of this if you have your your dependent I mean your independent variables or your regressors and you want to um, center them before you run this model then you're in what's called a centered uh, simple linear regression model now why do we center a model there there's a few reasons one it makes our mathematical derivations easier that might be a reason to center a model right because they're technically the same it, it, it's irrelevant which one we use um, another is when we talk about what's called multicollinearity which we're not going to address in this video, but it has to deal with how many predictors and you have in the correlation between them. Um, and then maybe another one is when you were talking about interaction terms that we might want to center some of these variables. 
Other than that, I don't, you know, usually we don't center. So now we 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 want to develop some criteria to find the line. Okay. So if this is our data, so th so the x's and y's, and we plot it, and that kind of looks linear. Jokingly, I'm I might say, you know, squint your eyes and, and drink a beer, then it's definitely linear, you know. Being a little silly, of course. But you can see that this line is 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 the data is linear now is this line better or this line or this line you know how do we find the best line so we're going to develop some criteria called least squares on how to find this line so any candidate line so y hat you know it's we're going to call that the fitted line goes through the data now our data the x and what the line predicts up here, you know, they're a little different, and that's called the error term. You know, it's the data minus the fitted line. Now, of course, we want this error term as small as possible. So one criteria is that we somehow add up all those errors and we minimize them. Okay, that's one criteria. Another is that we look at the squared distance. So we square each of these distances and minimize that, that squared error. And actually, that's what we're going to do. Is we're going to minimize the squared distance or the squared error on any line. So if we fit a line, you know, that's like this, you know, these, these, the error terms, you know, is going to be big, you know, small here, but big. And so that's probably not a good line. And so... But, you know, somewhere in here, we, we do it. Now, that's the least squares, right? So we're going to find the least squares line. So the, to find the model that minimizes this, so remember yi minus the fitted line, that's this error term for each data point because we're summing them, right? Now, if we put in what our... Uh, line is it's beta naught plus beta one xi right so we're going to minimize this and we're going to pick beta zeros and beta ones we're going to keep everything else fixed so this is really can be thought of as a function of beta zero and beta one so that's why we call it q of beta zero beta one well um now we want to start taking partial derivatives that's how we maximize or minimize something so we want to take partial derivatives of this Q function with respect to beta zero and beta one. But equivalently, we could take partial derivatives of beta naught star and beta one with respect to the centered model. And then we can, you know, if we know beta naught and beta one, then we can back solve for beta naught, you know, here. And, and that's actually what we're going to do because the derivations are just slightly easier. And, but the derivations are going to be, the, we're going to end up the same. But we're going to use the, the centered model. So let's take the partial derivative of our centered model with respect to beta naught star. And then um, remember we, we plug it in here, you know, that's this. Right? So now when we take the partial with respect to beta naught star, and remember this is a, you know, it's a squared term, so we have to bring the 2 out front, and then we subtract this by 1, which is this, and then we have to take the derivative with respect to beta naught star, which is just going to be minus 1. Now we set this to 0, and we try to solve for things. So oh, let me go back one term here. So here we multiply everything by minus one to get rid of it essentially, and then that stays zero. We divide by two to get rid of it. Then we take this sum in. So we got the sum of yi, and then we got the sum of this. It's a constant, so there's going to be n of those. And then the sum of this, so that the beta one's a constant, comes out of the sum, and we just have the, this. 
So that's what we end up here. So we, we've worked that sum into this. Oh, I didn't skip a step. So good. So here, we just have the sum of the y's. And this is constant, so there's n of them. And this goes to 0. And, and so if we factor the beta 1 out, and then we sum over here, so we have the sum of xi and the sum of x bar. So that's, I'm illustrating why this is 0. And so this is the sum of the yi's. And then here, there's uh, that's constant. There's no index, so there's n of them. So it's n x bar. But remember, x bar is the sum of the x divided by n. So those n's cancel. We're left with the sum of the x's minus the sum of the x, which is 0. So we're left with this term here. And to solve for beta naught star, you over and divide by n, and you get beta naught star is y bar. Now, uh, to take the partial with respect to beta 1 of this term, now I went ahead and, and did it. So the 2 that was the exponent comes here, and then we subtract it by 1. And then we take the derivative with respect to beta 1. So we get this piece here, right? And then we can't forget about that negative term that was in there. So it's a minus 1. Now we start solving for um, beta 1. So we divide everything by 2. We multiply by 1 to get rid of this. And then let's, multi let's take this into each term. So this and xi is this, and then this, that piece, and then this makes it a squared. And then we're still equal to zero. And if we call this sum sxy, this piece, and this goes to zero, right? The beta naught can come out, and then the sum of this was zero, which we showed up here. Then we have beta one, it actually comes out front, and then that we call that sum SXX, the sum of the x's squared. Then when we solve for beta one, we take it over and divide by SXX, and we get this. And so that's it. So that's those are our two least squares estimates. So now, remember we solve for beta 1 and beta naught star. So we have to solve for beta naught star in the simple linear regression. So we're modeled that, recall that beta naught star was this. So we can subtract this to the other side and solve for beta naught. So beta naught is this. And we know what this is. That least squares estimate was y bar. And the uh, least squares estimate for beta 1 was sxy over sx, you know, and then times. And so that's it. So that's our least squares estimate. So therefore, um, that is it. So this is our candidate model. So there's our intercept term, and there's our slope. Okay. Well, the video is running a little long, so I'm going to uh, cut it off here. But in the next video, we're going to study the properties of these two least squares estimates. Or we're going to show that they're unbiased. We're going to find the variances. We're also going to show that these are linear uh, estimates in the y's. Okay? And that becomes important because with the normal theory assumption, the y's are normally distributed. So then these become linear combinations of independently normal random variables. So these become normal. With with the normal assumption theory. Well, that's all I have. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.